Beneath the endless forests of Canada's Yukon, where mountains rise into clouds and rivers cut through untouched wilderness, something ancient is quietly stirring. For centuries, this land has seemed unshakable, a stable corner of the continent, far from the chaos of the Pacific Rim. But deep below the surface, a hidden fault is grinding back to life. Scientists call it the Tintina Fault, and new research suggests it may be preparing to rupture in an earthquake so powerful it could rattle half of North America. The most unsettling part? It's been silent for 12,000 years. In geology, silence isn't peace, it's pressure. Recent studies now reveal scars in the landscape, ancient cracks, buried and forgotten, that only advanced satellites and laser drones could uncover. These scars tell a story of past destruction and a warning for what's still to come. Because when the Tintina finally breaks, it won't be a small tremor lost in the wilderness. It could be a magnitude 7.5 quake, the kind that reshapes mountains and swallows rivers. So why has no one heard of this fault before? And how did it stay hidden beneath one of the most remote regions on Earth for millennia? Let's pull back the forest floor and find out. The Tintina Fault stretches more than 600 miles beneath the surface of northwestern Canada, slicing through mountains, forests, and rivers from British Columbia to central Alaska. It's one of the longest hidden fault systems in North America, and until recently, almost no one realized it was still alive. To the untrained eye, the Yukon looks perfectly stable. No volcanoes, no deep valleys, no obvious cracks. But beneath the moss and tundra lies a right lateral strike-slip fault, meaning the crust on each side is slowly sliding past the other, millimeter by millimeter. It's the same type of fault as California's San Andreas, except colder, older, and far less understood. For decades, geologists believed Tintina was ancient history, a fossil from the time when North America was still forming. But new technology has changed everything. Using high-resolution satellite imagery and drone-mounted LIDAR, scientists have peeled back the wilderness like a map, revealing hidden fault scarps stretching for miles. They discovered faint ridges and displaced river channels, subtle, almost invisible signs that the land has torn itself apart before. And the most chilling revelation? Those scars are fresh enough to prove the fault is ruptured not once, but many times, and could do so again. In other words, what we thought was dead is only sleeping. Because the Tintina Fault isn't a relic of the past, it's a countdown clock buried beneath the heart of the North. For thousands of years, the Tintina Fault has been silent. No major quakes, no visible rifts, no signs of unrest. But in geology, quiet doesn't mean calm. It means energy building with nowhere to go. When scientists examined the terrain with laser-precise data, they found something extraordinary. Faint fault scarps stretching in perfect lines through dense forest, each one a wound in the earth, frozen in time. By analyzing these scarps, researchers determined that the Tintina has ruptured multiple times over the past two and a half million years. But the last known major event was more than 12,000 years ago, since then, the fault has been slowly and steadily accumulating strain. At a glance, the movement seems harmless, less than one millimeter per year. But multiply that by 12 millennia, and the pressure adds up to something colossal. Dr. Theron Finley, who led the new study, says it plainly. This fault will rupture again. We just don't know when. And that's the part that keeps geologists awake at night. The longer a fault remains locked, the more violently it releases when it finally breaks. Think of it like bending a metal bar, slow, silent, until one moment when it suddenly snaps. No one can say if that moment will come tomorrow, a century from now, or 10,000 years ahead. But the evidence is clear. The ground beneath Canada's north isn't finished moving. It's just waiting for the right spark. Earth's crust is never still. Even here, in the vast stillness of the Yukon, the ground is in motion, drifting just millimeters each year. But beneath that calm, the Tintina Fault is caught in a silent tug of war. It's what geologists call a right lateral strike-slip fault, the same type as California's San Andreas. That means the land on either side is slowly grinding past itself locked in place by friction until the stress finally overcomes the rock's strength. When that happens, the release is instantaneous, a quake that can split rivers, drop valleys, and shift entire landscapes. 
For the Tintina, that energy has been building since the last ice age. GPS readings suggest it's accumulating strain at up to 0.8 millimeters per year, tiny on paper, massive over time. Every decade adds another fraction of tension to a system already under immense pressure. And because it sits in a colder, older section of Earth's crust, the rocks here are harder, meaning they don't bend easily, they break. When they do, the energy doesn't just shake the north, it ripples through the continental plate itself. That's why scientists warn that a Tintina rupture could be felt across thousands of miles, from Alaska's wilderness to Canada's interior towns. The last time a fault this size moved suddenly in North America, it shifted the coastline by several meters. So if the Tintina were to go next, the shockwaves could rewrite the map of the Yukon overnight. At first, it would seem like nothing. A low rumble, distant, deep, like a freight train buried underground. Then, within seconds, the ground would lurch. Buildings would sway, ice-covered lakes would ripple as if boiling. If the Tintina Fault were to rupture today, the shaking could last nearly two minutes, long enough to fracture highways, buckle pipelines, and trigger landslides across the Yukon and central Alaska. Towns like Dawson City and Whitehorse could experience severe ground motion, while remote infrastructure, bridges, rail lines, and transmission towers could crumble under the strain. But the danger wouldn't stop there. This isn't just a northern problem. The Tintina is tied into a massive web of faults stretching all the way to the Denali and Fairweather systems. When one fault breaks, it redistributes stress, sometimes thousands of kilometers away. That means a rupture here could ripple outward, raising the risk of secondary quakes across Alaska, western Canada, and even parts of the Pacific coast. And there's another hidden danger, landslides in mountainous terrain, Shaking like this could send entire slopes crashing into river valleys, damming waterways, and creating sudden flood risks downstream. Avalanches could bury roads, communication lines could vanish in minutes. For a sparsely populated region, the human toll might seem low, but the impact on power grids, transport routes, and even mining operations could be enormous. The economic shockwaves would travel just as far as the seismic ones. No one knows exactly what the next rupture will look like, only that when it comes, it won't be small. Today, the Tintina Fault sleeps under miles of forest, rivers, and ice. Silent, invisible, almost forgotten. But scientists know that silence can be deceptive, because deep beneath the Yukon, the Earth is still moving, and the clock is still ticking. For at least 12,000 years, the Tintina has been building tension grain by grain, storing enough energy to unleash a quake as powerful as magnitude 7.5, maybe stronger. That's comparable to the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan, or the 2018 Anchorage quake that rattled all of Alaska. The only difference is, we can't predict when this one will strike, or how much energy it's already holding back. Satellite data now shows micro deformations across parts of the Yukon, a few millimeters here, a fraction there, the telltale fingerprints of strain accumulating. And yet, unlike California or Japan, this region has no dense monitoring network, no public drills, and no early warning systems. If the Tintina moves again, it may catch the North completely off guard. But here's the paradox. It's also one of the best places on Earth to study how continents break. Geologists are now racing to map every scarp, every subtle bend in the landscape, using LIDAR and satellite radar to reconstruct the Tintina's violent history. Each crack tells a story of past ruptures, a glimpse into what the next one might bring. The more they learn, the more they realize this fault isn't dead. It's just waiting. When it finally ruptures, whether in 10 years or 10,000, it will reshape everything we thought we knew about North America's interior. It's a reminder that even in the quietest corners of the continent, the Earth is never truly at rest. So here's the question. Do you think North America's next big one will come from the Pacific coast or from deep within the heart of the continent itself? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to keep exploring the hidden forces shaping our planet, Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell, because the Earth's next move may already be underway.